my people how we doing today um we're gonna talk about boxing today but before we get started i just wanted to to talk about something just really just touch on it um and then move on really quick see how fast i can do this but the whole trump thing he did that he got um shot in the ear i haven't really been keeping up with it the last thing i heard is that the shooter um um people were telling uh the the cops and um the police well the cops and the police are the same thing but the they were telling the police and they were telling um some of the secret service i think they were telling them as well hey there's a guy walking cuz he was he was literally walking through the field with a gun um very unprofessional but i'm not even a professional but i know that uh for sure that's not how you do it you know <laughs> I gotta walk up to the building with a gun. Um, and, and yeah, no, but yeah, he he was walking up the uh, uh, walking towards the building with the rifle. People were looking at him. They were like, "Hey, there was a guy walking over here with a rifle." Um, for those of you that don't know, even though these these places are. Uh, pro gun people, you know, all of these woo guns and stuff like that. It's pro gun uh, people mostly there. None of them have guns because they're not permitted to have guns there. So it just goes to show you kind of like the hypocrisy is like, yeah, you can have guns everywhere else, but just not around us, not the rich people, not the uh, important ones like Trump. Uh, you guys, you guys go ahead and, and by the way, there was really quick just touching on that. There was just another a gunfight because I'm just gonna call it a gunfight. That's what it is. In the gas station over here, Seven Eleven, and that's constant, by the way. That's like where I live. They're constantly shooting each other at these gas stations. Um, you know, I'm from Texas. Everybody has a gun. Everybody carries. And every once in a while, they just have gunfights, like literally, like the Wild West. I know that sounds cool, but people die. Okay, sometimes people die. So I don't think it's I don't think it's cool. Now I'm not talking about gun reform or anything like that. I'm just letting you know what's happening. It's real. It happens almost every day. Um, every other day. Um, and it's not just what you see on the news, right? But my thing is, this guy walked up to a building. The cops were advised about it. You know, they were told about it. They did it. They didn't do nothing. Even the guy that was talking about it with the red cap or whatever, the MAGA hat with the hairs in the top, he said, um, "Yeah, I I told them, and they were acting like they didn't know what was going on." So even to him, it was suspicious. He didn't come out and say it, but to him, it was suspicious. Then you got the fact that. One of the rifle guys was already pointing at the guy. Or pointing in that direction. I'm not saying it's fake. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm not saying that the president was set up or anything like that. I'm just telling you the, the, the weird, suspicious things around uh, the, the whole Trump thing. Uh, then he they only shot him after he fires the first shot. Um, And that's when you start thinking you know either i mean i don't know i'm not an expert or anything but either he got set up and it failed um uh, which means he needs to um start start uh start to kick people out and 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 get fresh new people um to the secret service or his agents around him at least um but from what I heard, he chose those people. He got the people out. From what I heard, he got the people out that were the were the Secret Service that were serving him, and he got people that he liked, which is like yes men. Um, and people were making fun of some of the females on there, where <laughs> it looked kind of funny to me. But hey, man, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not an expert. So you guys, maybe you guys know about guns and stuff like that. What do I know? Um. But yeah, I was I was thinking about that. I was like, man, that, that's just so weird. Like, even the picture looks like 
you know, stupid good. Um, and it's like, that can't be a coincidence, right? But at the same time, photographers are really good these days. Like, they could, they know how to capture moments. They're really good at that. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, the other thing is people are acting surprised, right, that this happened. I'm really not surprised. I think Donald Trump is, is nothing new, in my opinion. We've seen um guys like this and the consequences for guys like this is either well they get they get other people in trouble and they get themselves in trouble like for example ryan garcia okay it, it, i always say that boxing is the microcosm of the macrocosm and the reason i say that is because it's it's very similar you know in boxing, we are disillusioned with our establishments. We're disillusioned with our um, the powers that be because they don't give us the fights. And, you know, we also don't trust the judges. You know, we don't trust the refs anymore because the refs always do stupid shit. We don't trust um, the promoters, right? Nobody likes any promoter. You know, you got people that hate um, De La Hoya. We got people that hate Mayweather. We got people that hate you know, PBC without Heyman. You know, you know, all of these people are hated. We Nobody likes the establishment. You know, and, and the people were disillusioned. And here comes Ryan Garcia saying, fuck everything. Fuck all of these guys. Fuck the rules. You know, and he starts going at everybody. And everybody's like, woo, yes, that's what we were thinking. This this guy's like us. You know? By the way, I'm uh, chewing gum, but I'll stop in a little bit. Because we were disillusioned with the whole process, with the whole, um, the the whole system, you know, and that's why people gravitated towards Ryan Garcia, because he was this quote unquote real guy. He's just keeping it real, right? And basically, he's being an asshole. You know, he's um, uh, disrespecting women, disrespecting, you know, different races. At different times, you know, he he talked bad about black people. He talked bad about Jews. He said something things bad about Muslims. Um, so many, so many people he's insulting. Would you be surprised if someone, if any one of those groups that he insulted, wanted to do something to Ryan? No, you wouldn't be surprised. And some of you would even defend him and say. That they want to kill him because he's saying the truth. But the truth is it could be any number of things. Any number of reasons. The guy that shot him, uh, Trump, was actually a Republican. A registered Republican. And some people were saying that, oh no, he made a donation. One donation to a Democrat party. But that turned out to be fake. You know, that's, a, that's another guy that was pretending to be him. Or, or pretending to be another guy or something like that. The whole thing is weird. The point is, that wasn't him. He was a Trump supporter, and he was definitely a right-winger. Which, of course, statistically, I must say, I have to say, is because I am a person that believes in statistics. That's how I approach boxing. You know, with statistics and also with momentum and patterns and stuff like that. That's how I approach boxing. That's how you know I approach boxing. That's how I'm going to approach pretty much everything. Statistically, right-wing extremists are the main people that do shootings, that do domestic violence, that do um, uh, domestic terrorism. That's what I want to say, domestic terrorism. Um, and probably domestic violence, if we go to the numbers, I'm pretty sure that the... Uh, uh, I mean, let's not get into that, because that's another subject. But... 
Domestic terrorism, for sure. The number one cause of domestic terrorism is right-wing extremists. Not no uh, Muslim immigrants, uh, Shiite, um, whatever. You know, um, no, right-wing right -wing extremism. So, I'm just giving you the facts. You guys think what you're going to think. Let me know what you think. Was it a setup? Was it real? Was it uh, Was it fake to make Trump look good? Because I really don't know. Um, I personally, from what I've gathered, if I if I was to say something, if I was to 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 lean on something that's more probable, I think um, this guy was a right winger and he wanted to cause a civil war because that's what the right has been wanting for a long time. You know, I'm from Texas, and Texas is always talking about seceding. They've always been talking about, oh, we need to secede from the union so we could get the Yankees. I was like, bro, what are you doing? It's 2024, about to be 2025, and you're still talking like you're from the Wild West. It doesn't make any sense, bro. But believe it or not, there is people in Texas that talk like that. And I'm pretty sure there's people in Tennessee that talk like that. I'm pretty sure there's people in Oklahoma that talk like that. There's people in all of these right-wing places that have been... Talking that shit for a long time. And they knew, in my opinion, that if they shot Donald Trump, it was going to set off a civil war and a separation from um, South and, and East or whatever the separation is going to be. I, I don't know. Um, point is, that's my theory. That's what I think. But it doesn't mean that it's real. It doesn't mean that that um, I'm sure of it. Of it. So moving on here, guys, um, I hope that didn't take too much time, but let's talk about what I want to happen in boxing. You know, now, we've seen the fight with Benavides and Vasnik, and we've seen, well, we're about to see Terrence Crawford versus Israel Maldromov, um, and we did see Boots versus... I forgot his name, um, but the, the 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 German guy. We we saw we saw the fight. So now Terence Crawford had already fought that guy and beat him in in almost the same fashion a little bit later, and it was an actual knockdown. But um, nothing to take away from Butsenis because Butsenis, um, I think broke his jaw and his nose, and he was unable to. To come out for the for the next round, so it was a technical knockdown, uh, which, if, in my opinion, it's about the same thing. Um, I think not being a, still being on your feet and not being able to come out for the for another round is for the fighter more humiliating. Um, I think most fighters want to go out on their shield for some reason. That's the way they think, and get just get knocked out. If you if you're gonna beat me, you gotta knock me out. Um, but, you know, it just depends, you know, people are going to think differently. But I think these fighters are pretty close as of right now. But I still give the edge to Terrence Crawford. But I still want to see the fight. Because I think it's going to make a lot of money for a lot of people. And it's just going to be, it's going to set up for, in my opinion, a potential fight between Canelo Alvarez and the winner of that fight. And I think, you know, I think Canelo Alvarez you know, should fight Benavides, <laughs> you know, and they're talking about Berlanga, they're talking about all these other guys, but I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking you should fight Benavides, because the winner of that then goes on to fight the winner of Terrence Crawford versus, um, versus Boots. You know, which I think would be kind of like a little Kumite, like a little Kumite tournament type type thing. You know, like I've always wanted to see something like that for some reason. <laughs> but I think it could happen, guys, because it's either going to happen or people are going to start looking like duckers. Okay, Boots, I don't know his situation, um, but I'm starting to think that a lot of these fighters are not really fighters. You know, they're not really, um, 
they're not really about making the fights happen because, as I said already, Benavides has a chance to activate a mandatory either with Bevo or Canelo Alvarez, and he's not doing it. You know, they gave him an extension to do it again, but he's not doing it. So the only reason someone would not activate something like that is because he doesn't really want it. You know, and that's just plain and simple. Listen, Canelo's not supposed to be chasing Benavides. Benavides means nothing to him. Okay. Um, Benavides is the one that needs Canelo. Okay, so it, it just, just wouldn't be um, natural for Canelo to even think about chasing Benavides. So Benavides needs to activate this um, uh, mandatory so that the ball will be on Canelo's court or fight Bebo. It don't matter. Um, either way, I think he knows and I know that it's bad news for him and that he's now he's stuck because somebody called this bluff. And it, that's what it looks like to me. That That's twice that that happened. Uh, one time it happened when Turkey LSU told him, no, you're not going to fight Canelo. You're going to fight um, the winner of Bebo versus uh, Baturbiev. And David was like, uh, let me test myself out first. So he went and he tested himself out against Matt, I mean, um, Vosnik. And next thing you know, he's like, you know what? I'm not going to go up and wait no more. So... That shows you that um, he found out that it's not as easy. You know, it's not as easy to move up and wait. And it's not as easy to, um, you know, do what Canelo does. There's a saying in Mexico that says, uh, Los toros se ven de lejos. Pero de cercas se torean. Meaning, you can see a bull. In, in English, it would be like, you could see a bull from far away. But you got to get close to mess with it. Right? And that's basically saying, it may look easy from the outside looking in. Um, when you see a matador beat up a big bull. But once you get close... And that bull is right in your face. And you feel his power. Then you start realizing that you don't belong in there with those guys. You don't belong in there with those bulls. And you start to appreciate what the matador does. And you start to appreciate that maybe Canelo is that matador. And maybe you should just not be in there at all. Um... And that's what I think happened to Benavides. That's what it looks like happened to Benavides. Because right after that fight uh, with Vosnik, he said he was going to go back down and um, continue campaigning in with the little guys. Which, by the way, he doesn't belong in that weight class. He's, he's big. And everybody knows that. Turkey knows that. Um, and, and everybody knows it. Right. The thing is, he's scared, bro. He's he's just he's a scared little boy, deep down inside. Um, that's what it seems like. And I, I and I, you know what? I'll take it back. If you activate your um, mandatory, if you don't, um, it's obvious to me what's going on here. You know, and 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 the thing is. In this day and age of boxing, you could fake it. And you don't even have to make it. <laughs> you know how I say fake it till you make it? Now, this day and age is fake it and just fake it. <laughs> um, just keep faking it. And, yeah, people make money like that these days. They they pretend, oh, I want this fight, I want that fight. He's scared of me. They don't want to give me the fights. But guess what? American fighters are not fighting. Basically, they're doing everything, anything but fighting. And and the thing is, I told you before, like, Turkey Alek Sheik and all of these other guys are making it to where 
American fighters have no excuse anymore. They can get the fights that they want. And they're either going to join the club of the people that want to make it happen. Or they're going to continue to stay in this um, place, which is the U.S., that does not make ha fights happen. Because everybody hates each other. Everybody um, is competing against each other. And 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 you got the Oscars don't want to make deals with the Bobs. The Bobs don't want to make deals with the with the uh, Mayweathers. The Mayweathers don't want to make deals with. Now they don't want to make deals with uh, PBCs. And everybody's like looking at each other like a Mexican standoff. We don't like each other. Boom, we're gonna shoot each other. And here comes a, a guy, Turkey Alex Sheik, saying, "Hey guys, don't fight each other. Just come with me, and I'll make the fights happen." And now you start realizing that a lot of these people, it's not that they hate each other for whatever reason. Maybe they're from different platforms or whatever, or sometimes even racism, whatever. It's not that. It's the fact that they're not really fighters, bro. It's the fact that they've been living off of this system and taking advantage of this system. To the point where they know themselves that they don't really have to fight. They could just survive off of clout. That's what it looks like to me. Um, but hopefully after this video I, I check the news and and, and Benavides has activated his um, mandatory. But so far, you know. And listen, I said I said that the Canelo was a duck. But now it's Benavides. Now Benavides is a duck. Um, you gotta you gotta keep it you gotta keep it um consistent. But that's what I want, guys. I want Benavides versus Canelo, and um, if Terence beats Madrimov, um, then I want Boots versus uh, Terence Crawford. You know, and I think um, Terence Crawford should get through Madrimov. Um, Madrimov has a lot of bad habits. Um, and he likes to launch in. I'm not saying launching in is bad, but if you're not setting stuff up and you're not doing it a smart way, um, launching in could, could get you killed. <clears throat> the reason I, I don't think launching in is bad is because Hagler used to do it a lot. He would uh he would set it up though. But anyways. Um yeah, the, the other thing that worries me though about Terrence is, is his inactivity. You know, he's he's very inactive. Um and there's always an excuse. The point is I'm looking at the common denominators and at the patterns. And to me, Americans, like I said, they just don't fight for whatever reason. It could be they don't want to fight me, like they say. It could be, um, like Ruiz. Ruiz is American too. And guess what he does? He doesn't fight. You see what I'm saying? You you, under, you get what I'm t trying to tell you here. It's not, or maybe it is, but for whatever reason, these fighters, these American fighters, they just don't fight, bro. You know, they always have an excuse to not fight. And like I said before, it's coming to the point where these people are going to come off as liars now because they can't hide anymore. They can't run anymore. They have the opportunity to make the fights happen and be successful in boxing for real, for real, if they wanted to. And if they don't do it, it's going to be their fault. That's why I, I, I don't like uh, Ruiz. You know, I saw um, a video that I didn't watch because I saw Andy Ruiz's stupid face on there. <laughs> and it said, it could have been me. And I was like, man, I'm not clicking on that. I'm not clicking on that because it, it's angering to me that someone like Andy Ruiz is saying it could have been me. And it's like, yeah, we know. We know. And we get. I gave up on you a long time ago, Andy. Because you had it. And you let it go because. 
You're just this guy that's not really a boxer. Just like a lot of people in boxing. They're not really fighters, bro. They're just one of these guys that took advantage of the opportunities of the weakness of our boxing system. And and they continue to do that. And every time... This is how I know Andy isn't a, isn't a real fighter. When he won that fight with Anthony, he immediately... Let go of himself. And he came back even heavier. And he came back even worse than before. He he got his ass beat. Um, and he didn't do much. And then he did it again. He got another fight. And guess what he did? He went out, started partying. Inactive. Every time he gets a big fight, he becomes inactive for two years. I'm exaggerating, but I mean, come on. Why Why do you think that is? Because he doesn't like to fight. He doesn't like to do it. If he loved it, he would do it as much as he could. So get out of here with that coulda, shoulda, woulda shit. Let me look at um, um another victim. Of, of the boxing way, of the American boxing way. Um, Andre Ward. Constantly bitching about Canelo. Constantly hating on him. You know why? Because he knows deep down inside that he could have done more. He knows deep down inside that he could have stuck around and challenged himself with the Beterbiev's, with the... Um, um, Gennady Golovkins with all of these guys. People wanted him to fight a whole bunch of guys, and and he said, "No, I'm leaving." Like he has accomplished way too much. He he didn't accomplish shit. Andre Ward, I'm sorry, dude. You could have done way more, but you valued the O way more than greatness. And symbolically, to me, that doesn't even make sense. Because you're valuing, they're putting value on a zero over greatness. And that's what all of these boxers are doing now. They want that, oh, so bad that they don't want to risk it. That's why the Shakurs are still, might as well be contenders. That's why uh, uh, Tank is the same way. And you still got these posts, uh, people that are still undefeated. It's like, but, but nobody cares, bro. Nobody cares about that. The greatest fighters in the world lost. The greatest of them lost. And the ones that didn't lose constantly have to be reminding people how great they are. Because deep down they know that they're not as great. As Muhammad Ali, they're not as great as Mike Tyson. They're not as great as all of these fighters that actually had bloody wars with their enemies. That's why Mayweather constantly has to be on, on, the, on the news because he, he knows that pretty in about like what five years he's not going to be a thing anymore. And he's constantly trying to block people from greatness because he knows, bro. He knows that it's very easy to break his record. It's very fragile. All of this stuff, all of this illusions of the zero is fake. And it's very easy to break. That's why Mayweather is constantly hating on Tank. Hating on all of these young fighters and switching off of one side to the other. Because he knows it. And that's why Andre Ward is constantly doing the same thing. He's constantly hating on the younger guys or on the active guys. Because he knows deep down inside that the shit that he did in 5, 10 years from now is not going to be worth nothing. And he knows that he was he, he should have stuck around for longer. He should have risked it. Risked it. Um... He knows that. You know, so to the young fighters, man, don't be like Andre. Because if you if you do what Andre does, you're going to live the rest of your life 
bitter and with that same stupid face that that Andre Ward has all the time with his sleepy eyes. That's why he's like that because he's like, man, I should have stuck around longer. <laughs> Um, but anyways, guys, that is my opinion. Uh, by the way, I think, uh, Ruiz should win. He should win. Um, but as an example, I think he shouldn't. <laughs> 